the word on the street is that the Venom movie has wrapped shooting. I figured this was a great opportunity to break down all the information coming out from behind the scenes and the officially released promotion. We're going to discuss Peter Parker, the Life Foundation, and Carnage all being in the movie. Let's talk about it. What is up, YouTube? It's Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. If you love comic book movies, subscribe to this channel. We do all sorts of content about those types of movie films. Oh, and shout out to the Green Mamba 25 who got the nerd card question correct in my last Snoke video. You definitely know your stuff when it comes to Star Wars. So shout out to you, Green Mamba. There will be another nerd card question at the end of this video all right guys let's dig into this tom hardy recently posted on social media about the venom movie wrapping its films now this movie is supposed to come out on october 5th and it really feels like they will hit that release date it should be smooth easy going from here they're gonna put some kind of a cut together they'll go back do some reshoots some punch-ups but the majority of the cast and crew are done filming this is very very cool by the way tom hardy great ambassador for this movie on social media it's really really a cool thing man go follow him on social media if you want to keep up with all the craziness going on in this movie now Let's get right into the Spider-Man of all of this, right? John Schnepp broke a couple weeks ago that Spider-Man, a.k.a. Peter Parker, will make a cameo in the film. Now, he sort of walked back on those comments a little bit saying that, no, 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 it's not Spider-Man, it's Peter Parker being in the film. And I really personally hope that this has something to do with the story. So I'm hoping for more than just a cameo of him walking down the street. We have heard reports that Tom Holland was on the set of the Venom movie for multiple days of shooting so hopefully i think it's going to be a scene at the beginning of the movie and i think it's going to be a scene at the end of the movie so speaking of spider-man let's kind of get into the minutia of how this is all going to work because i see a lot of comments on my venom movie stuff where people are still sort of confused about what is going on here so basically sony is building a world a universe for the spider-man character to which they have an arrangement with Marvel for that character to come back home to Sony and play around in. So you can think of it as the Spider-Man comics, but Spider-Man's hanging out in the Avengers films for a couple, uh, you know, issues and there's going to be some sort of annuals or something going on like I, this is all comic book talk but my point is these things are going to exist separately but tom holland is the link to all of this so i don't know exactly how this works from a contractual standpoint but as soon as i heard about this deal going down and them building what they're calling the sony marvel universe i was incredibly interested this is such a cool idea sony's essentially like look We've got this deal with Marvel. They created this version of the character. People love it. It resonates. It's really, really great. They mess around with the Avengers and whatnot. We can take that character and bring him back on like a small scale and have him play with the basically gamut of characters that we have through the Spider-Man rights and create a world for him to sort of go into. It's just, it's such a cool idea. And I think that the idea is for the casual fans to, to really think that these universes are completely shared and just like in deadpool where they make like subtle references to the mcu it's very possible that the venom movie the silver and black you know all of these sony marvel films will sort of put little nods to what's happening in the mcu and i am really interested in how sony will pull this off so part of the reason that i'm so excited about this movie and i'm you know there's a lot of youtubers covering this but i think i'm one of the one people that really is excited for this venom movie and, and part of the reason is i want to see how sony is going to pull this off from a business perspective it's incredibly interesting to me at first i thought they were just sort of positioning themselves to get a better deal when they sign with marvel again but that might not be the case they might legitimately think that they can build this separate but sort of congruent universe to the mcu spider-man and hey look if it's if it's gonna work for them and marvel still wants a spider-man character they might play ball they might sign some contracts who knows it could really lead to some really crazy play 
All right, now let's talk about Carnage. Now, we've all thought that Carnage was going to be in this film sort of from day one. And the reason is this. Venom's actually not a hero. He's not a hero, especially the Eddie Brock Venom. He's a villain, right? Sometimes an anti-hero, but mostly a villain. Now, the one way you can sort of make Carnage, or uh, rather, sorry, the one way you can make villain, damn, this is ridiculous. The one way you can make Venom sort of not a villain anymore is to have Carnage because Carnage is a way worse dude. I mean, think back to the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, which I'm sure all of you are probably aware of and remember watching, but remember when they're in prison and Cletus Cassidy literally breaks out and then Venom and Spider-Man sort of have to work together. I mean, that's your classic scenario. That's what makes sense. So you have to have a super dark, super evil villain in order for Venom to sort of have some kind of a heroic role. I mean, he's the protagonist of the film. So in order for that to work, you need Carnage. I think it just makes sense. But recently, Tom Hardy actually put a very cool picture up on his social media with him in the foreground and carnage in the background now that photograph was taken down and if you know anything about social media whenever actors or personalities take something down from their social media accounts it's usually like big businesses or brands sort of being like hey yo we're not ready for that or hey that's going to give out the wrong message classic example when mark hamill tweeted about the last jedi trailer on monday night football and then deleted the tweet and then he tried to make some excuses about how he wasn't actually giving away the date. He totally was. So these businesses have to do sort of like damage control with all that stuff. And so this is probably a sign that Carnage will indeed be in the film. I'm excited. I, I actually don't know how much of a like a major role he'll play in the movie. And I almost hope he doesn't play a big role. And they sort of set him up for the future. Now, he can be really villainous and sort of play a role in having Venom, you know, turn to being like an anti-hero. And maybe the scene at the very beginning of the film is literally just Tom Hardy and Tom Holland talking about how they finally have Carnage in prison and Venom's like, yeah, but I'm leaving, you know, whatever, because we know we're doing the Lethal Protector storyline. So that could be really cool. But that's kind of what we know about Carnage. Oh, by the way, Riz Ahmed is not playing Carnage, which is crazy because that's kind of what we all thought. But that brings me to the Life Foundation. So I want to talk about the Life Foundation a little bit. It is apparently rumored that Riz Ahmed is going to play Dr. Carl Drake, okay? And he's a doctor at the Life Foundation, right? And we also got this first official set photo of Tom Hardy as Eddie Brock. And remember when this dropped, we were all like, really? That's that's what you're going to that's what you're going to show us to get us excited? That's uh it's pretty dumb. And it is. But that notepad that he's holding is from the Life Foundation. Certain people were looking at the text on there and like, "Oh, it's the Life Foundation. Holy cow, there's an Easter egg." blah 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 blah. blah. Now, I'm not going to like go into like the specifics on that but essentially here's what happens in the legal protector storyline with the life foundation the life foundation saves venom it saves eddie brock and then literally takes the symbiote and sort of harvests it to make five other symbiotes okay and this i think is where we're going to get to the crux of the conflict in the film first of all before i get into this if we have five other symbiotes and venom and carnage Holy crap, that's a lot of symbiotes. Good thing they've got a lot of time before October because that's a lot of CGI to handle. But in either case, here's what I think is going to happen. The Life Foundation is going to sort of offer to help Eddie Brock out, maybe even to separate from the Venom uh, symbiote. I think what's going to happen here is Eddie Brock wants to be free of this thing. Uh, there's going to be a lot of conflict there because, you know, the, the symbiote, I think, will come to really like Eddie and, and they want to be together. And he doesn't want anything to do with that. And so I think the Life Foundation might be like, hey, will help you get rid of this and then they're going to turn around and sort of betray him and create these other symbiotes and i think what those symbiotes are going to go on to do is be like a terror that no one can control and they're going to be like wicked evil and so eddie is going to have to literally get the symbiote back and be like look I don't want to do this, but we have to work together because he feels responsible for creating the other symbiotes. That is a very intriguing plot. Very, very interesting as far as the character development goes. So I'm kind of hoping that that is what we're going to get, right? How does Carnage play into all of that? I don't really know. They could just make Carnage one of the symbiotes that's created by the Life Foundation. I mean, all bets are off. This is an adaptation, so they don't have to follow the comic books very strictly. 
But the fact that the Life Foundation is in there and the fact that we know they're doing a lethal protector sort of makes me think that that is the direction they're going to take, which I'm all for. I think that's freaking awesome. My last couple thoughts here are just that Tom Hardy's just so legit. And as I've said in other videos, he's very particular about the scripts that he takes on. If you saw the video that he did for the Brazil Comic Con, he was so like happy and just amped to talk to the fans. And, and he really respects the fandom and wants to make the best Venom possible for the fans. As I said, I'm super interested to see what Sony is doing with this film and their shared universe. And I love the idea of several symbiotes mercenaries and a shared world for peter parker to later play in i mean this just sounds like a recipe for absolute craziness i'm super excited but let me know what do you guys think of all of this are you pumped for carnage are you pumped for the life foundation what do you think peter parker is going to be doing in this movie how much of a role do you think he's going to be and i know they said we're not getting spider-man like him in the suit but do you think that's like a lie you think we're going to get some spider-man in the suit that would be super hype man and they only need tom hardy on set or rather tom holland on set for a couple shots and then they can put someone else in the suit and have him bang around with the stunt doubles that could be really really dope but let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section below all right let's check that nerd card really quickly i want to know what is the name of this symbiote this is of course the white and black version of venom which was introduced in the lethal protector storyline what is the name of this symbiote answer that question in the comment section below as I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and nerdy day. See ya!